Aren't our values essentially based on our experience in life? Of course it is. And our experience is at the will of the, what you call the universe, I might call the will of God. Okay, sure. Right? So yeah. that is ultimately grace. We can call it grace. I mean, I, I use the term grace in as most people use it right. to describe the good stuff. Right. You know, of course. And then we call the bad stuff God's will. <laughs> so we have grace and we have God's will, and that covers everything. Right. But sometimes bad things, you may think that they're bad at, at some point in your life, right. and then you look down the road, and they ultimately end up being That's right. good things. Yeah. And that's why I was saying that what is bad and good is contextual. Yeah. So in a given moment, it's contextual. It, it feels it's terrible. Terrible. It feels right. It feels wrong. It feels good. It feels bad. And that's the only thing you've got to go by in terms of your life experience. When you have this broader perspective that your experience of the moment is not absolute but it is relative, then there is a spaciousness around it. You still feel it as the truth of the moment, but it isn't an absolute truth. It isn't the way that it is in a bigger sense. It is simply your experience of the moment. And there is implicit in that the understanding that this too shall pass. This will change. But when you feel it is absolute, then it has the sense of solidity, that it's always going to be this way, that this is how it is. And that kind of rigidity is suffering. Painful. Not only painful, but it is suffering. Painful is the shit you don't like. That's <laughs> painful. When it gets rigid and, and feels absolute, then you suffer because you projected that it's always going to be this way that it is universally awful. Yeah. And that's suffering. And that's the distinction I make between pain and, and suffering. suffering. And pain is not optional. <laughs> But what about the experience of it? Pain is not optional. Can't you say it feels worth when you're suffering through it, though, right? Well, the suffering is <laughs> when there is the secondary involvement. Right. So the pain of the moment now gets exploded right. out into the past, the future, into <laughs> everything. It covers everything. Yeah. That's, su that's suffering. Yeah. It's always going to be this way. I shouldn't have done this. And I'm responsible for it. The whole story around this pain right. is suffering. Yeah. But the pain itself yeah. just right. exists. Exists, exists as part of existence. Yeah. Because the existence is made up of polaric opposites. Yeah. Pleasure and pain, yeah. joy and sorrow, happiness and sadness. These things come together as a package. Mm -hmm. They're two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can't have one without the other. Right. You would like one more than the other. That's, exactly, <laughs> that's indisputable. But you can't have one without the other. And so when you begin, when you entertain the fantasy that somehow you are going to have only pleasure and no pain, only joy and no sorrow, and this is like the big one of the big, you know, sales pitches for in the enlightenment business. <laughs> you know, okay, follow me, get in line. We're going to go to the land of single-ended sticks. <laughs> And you can have this pleasure 
all the time. I told you about the guy who came to my talk in Sedona years ago. The guy comes to my talk. Then a couple of weeks later, he sends me in a manila envelope full of his promotional literature. <laughs> and I'm thumbing through this stuff. And it, he came, I went to Wayne Lickerman's talk in Sedona, you know, and, and then on this date and this time, I saw it all. I woke up. And, and I quote, and now every moment is like 10 thousand orgasms. Wow. I know. <laughs> not one, not two. Ten thousand orgasms every moment. Did you sign up for the workshop? Well, of course. <laughs> People wouldn't. Except, it, then I started thinking about it. That's a so if I was having ten thousand <laughs> orgasms every moment, how am I going to write promotional <laughs> material? Uh, I mean, if I'm having one orgasm, I'm not interested in anything it. else. <laughs> I'm interested in that. I have no energy, attention, focus for anything else. So if I'm having 10,000 of these things every moment, <laughs> I mean, like, why do anything? Why do anything? So, you know, but that's like, this is not that unusual. I mean, it, if you go through the, you know, the spiritual literature, I mean, that in various guises is what's being talked about all the time. It, you know, bliss, eternal bliss. I mean, it's not a hard sell. Who the fuck doesn't want to have 10,000 orgasms all the time? Who doesn't want to have bliss? Who doesn't want to have joy every minute? Of course you would. I mean, it's not a hard sell. But the, the point is that it's, it's just ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And it feeds, you know, a, a human desire, certainly. But when you, while you're busy pursuing bliss every moment, then you miss the incredible miracle of life right here. <laughs> 